And that is why today I publish plans to scale Bitcoin so that it has the bandwidth for everyone to make transactions as often and as quickly as they need. Okay, the goal of this video is to share with you why this announcement is historic and how StarkNet will scale Bitcoin. You might not know this, but the plan Eli Ben Sasson, the inventor of ZK Stark Proofs, talks about in this recent video isn't new. It started 11 years ago. It all began in the 1900s, when two innovations that form the foundation of StarkNet emerged. Initially described by Goldwasser, Mikali, and Rakoff in their 1985 paper, The Knowledge Complexity of Interactive Proof Systems, where the early ideas of ZKPs were introduced. Zero knowledge proofs are a cryptographic technology that allows proving the validity of information without revealing the information itself. A complete explanatory video is coming soon to explain this concept, but there's something more urgent to explain right now. In 1992, the discovery of seven theorems on advanced mathematics and cryptography led to a significant result. Aurora and Safra delivered their latest research describing the PCP theorem, probabilistic checking of proofs. A new mathematical method emerged, allowing for the monitoring and guaranteeing of the integrity of a large computation, verifiable by a small computer. But there's one condition, this small computer must be 100% reliable. In the conventional world of 1992, how could one find a single computer that everyone could trust? At that time, transactions were processed through centralized platforms like Visa and Swift. Users had to trust these platforms to manage their transactions fairly. Therefore, using the PCP theorem was unnecessary at that time. However, this missing condition was fulfilled a few years later. With the emergence of decentralized blockchain networks, the hope of seeing small, reliable computers began to materialize. Bitcoin enables small computers, like miners, to support a reliable network known as the blockchain. Indeed, a crucial category of innovation beyond cryptography and computation emerged in 2008. Satoshi's work changed everything. Bitcoin revitalized the peer-to-peer -peer nature of money exchange by eliminating the need for a trusted intermediary. Eli then built upon the research from PCP and ZKP technology to first create ZK Snarks and later ZK Starks. He unveiled his project to scale Bitcoin to the public during the Bitcoin conference in Rose Alley in 2013. However, to build on top of Bitcoin, it was necessary to code in Bitcoin script, which is a very simple but highly secure language that does not allow for the development of complex applications. Therefore, his ZK Stark solution could not be built on top of Bitcoin without a hard fork. Many members of the audience responded that this cryptographic research was exactly what the blockchain needed, but the majority of Bitcoiners obviously did not approve of the idea of a hard fork. Orsifying and stabilizing Bitcoin was a priority at that time. Satoshi himself saw great innovation in ZKPs, and the idea of applying them to Bitcoin was discussed as early as 2010, while he was still active, but the solution was not ready for Bitcoin at that time. After 31 years of research on ZK proofs, we finally succeeded in implementing them into a blockchain, and that was with Zcash. Eli Ben Sasson co-created Zcash because it was not possible to integrate ZKPs into Bitcoin given the challenge of the fork, which was insurmountable at the time. Zcash is a fork of Bitcoin on which Eli integrated ZK Snarks, thereby delivering a scalable blockchain with anonymized transactions. However, Zcash is far from having the decentralized network that Bitcoin has, so Eli did not stop with Zcash which did not seem to be the ultimate security solution for decentralized networks. Then, in 2018, Ethereum turned to sharding, opening the door to rollups. The objective is simple. One blockchain is not enough to scale, so it multiplies the execution layers, called rollups, to focus on the layer of security and decentralization. In the end, Ethereum would increasingly resemble Bitcoin, but with the intention of being scalable. This is precisely why Starkware focused on deploying ZK Rollup on Ethereum. Since ETH is a well-decentralized and highly programmable blockchain, this solution seemed to be the best fit for Starkware. There is a convergence of two lines of innovation. On one side, we have cryptographic techniques like PCP and Stark, which allow weak but reliable computers to guarantee large-scale integrity. 
On the other side, we have distributed systems technology with the Ethereum blockchain, which is ultra decentralized and secure, with weak nodes for an extremely reliable computer. These nodes can use mathematics to verify large-scale computations. This has led to the significant realization that blockchains align perfectly with the mathematics that guarantee integrity. This is how Eli and his development team seized the opportunity to create StarkX in 2020 which is the first ZK Stark rollup on Ethereum. Rollups are the best solution found to address blockchain scaling issues. The principle is to add a specific layer for scaling on top of the blockchain, called a layer two. It moves transaction execution off-chain to a separate network of nodes, which then produces packets of transactions and has these packets verified for the cost of a transaction on layer one. Essentially, this is what sharding is, as seen in Ethereum. It reduces the block space problem by increasing the number of transactions that can be compressed into a block without increasing its block size. Otherwise, computers would no longer be weak and distributed, making them less reliable. But Eli has not forgotten his initial mission. With StarkNet, he wants to create a technology that will stand the test of time. He is exploring what the best solution would be for the blockchain trilemma. It's important to understand that for StarkNet, this question boils down to finding the best layer of security and decentralization, because StarkNet positions itself as the ultimate layer for compression and scalability. As we have seen, for a while, the default answer to this question was Ethereum. But this vision of BTC as a settlement layer has always remained in the mind of the creator of StarkNet. Until recently, it was necessary to convince Bitcoiners to perform a hard fork with significant changes that could put the Bitcoin blockchain at risk in order to accommodate rollups like StarkNet. However, Bitcoin has always promoted ossification, but the integration of ZK proof into Bitcoin poses several problems. According to Satoshi, the biggest problem is, how do you prove that no other spends exist? It seems a node must know about all transactions to be able to verify that. If it only knows the hash of the in-out points, it can't check the signatures to see if an out point has been spent before. Do you have any ideas on this? A solution needed to be found so that Bitcoin could easily verify the entire state of its L2 with a ZKP on L2, which, as a reminder, allows a small, reliable, and weak computer like Bitcoin to verify large computers like StarkNet using mathematical proofs. All of this is now possible thanks to the significant advances made by Starkware and the Bitcoin community in recent years. Until today, Starkware has proven that their solution is the most scalable and secure. With five years of operation without any fraud and over $1 trillion passing through Starkware protocols, Starkware is indeed capable of addressing the problem identified by Satoshi. Implementing this solution brings a second challenge, compatibility with the BTC script VM. This VM only allows for a few operations, making it impossible to build very complex things like smart contract rollups but a recent discovery might change the course of things. Starks operate with hashes and Merkle trees, and it turns out that an old function that was once available on Bitcoin allowed for these Merkle tree operations to be performed remarkably well. This key function can be unlocked by the opcode known as opcat. This data assembly operation that creates the Merkle tree is widely used in blockchain, but it is not feasible on Bitcoin without opcat. The opcode was removed during the genesis of Bitcoin. Satoshi Nakamoto realized that there was an issue with the interaction between Bitcoin script and the opcat function. Opcat is short for concatenation, a function that allows the merging of two elements into one. After this merging, the element is added to the stack, and this process can be repeated indefinitely, which could overload the size of the Bitcoin script stack. This could lead to risks of saturating Bitcoin nodes. Satoshi, wanting to keep the Bitcoin protocol as simple and resilient as possible, preferred to take no risks. He decided to remove the opcat function along with other opcodes that could have put the blockchain at risk at that time. Today, this simple function, which fits within six lines of code, is the keystone that would open the door to scalability, enabling on-chain transactions with very low fees, expressiveness, essential for making programming on Bitcoin ergonomic and secure, with a different and more powerful programming language than Bitcoin script. On-chain security, regardless of the computation, Bitcoin script is only ever verifying a mathematical proof of delegated computation. Flexibility, computation on Bitcoin can store the global state, allowing for a plethora of applications. Six lines of code, 
six lines of code to verify StarkNet as a layer two on Bitcoin. And today, a new version of OpCat is proposed with a length check that eliminates this attack vector. However, we are not entirely safe from other attack vectors that we might not yet foresee which is what concerns some Bitcoiners. The ability to add privacy to Bitcoin could also pose problems because, as we know, state regulators do not like that. Bitcoin could become a target for governments, in addition to potential other attack vectors that we might not yet see. OpCat, being just six lines of code, could technically be implemented on BTC in a few hours. But, as you might expect, this is not something that will be implemented immediately. For now, Starkware is offering $1 million to support new research that will shed light on the pros and cons of adopting OPCAT on Bitcoin. If OpCat were to be implemented on BTC, it would take six months to integrate StarkNet as a layer two. But wouldn't it be considered too dangerous by Bitcoin's DAO? After all, Bitcoin is already good as it is. It doesn't need anything more than what it already has to fulfill its original mission. Should it even risk adding 0.001% chance of failure? However, other Bitcoiners see an opportunity to make Bitcoin not only the best store of value, but also the most widely used blockchain network, a complete alternative to the traditional financial system, making it the foundational layer for roll-ups and decentralized applications. Bitcoin miners would earn additional revenue with the increased use of its network, generating more fees and, therefore, more income. This would lead to an increase in the number of miners and thus greater decentralization as they seek to benefit from this revenue. More network security means more adoption on layer two, which would want to take advantage of it. As you can see, this additional revenue would create a virtuous cycle for BTC. We can only hope that potential attack vectors remain purely hypothetical. The Bitcoin application today is just a simple digital payment system, but modern markets need more. With the implementation of OpCat, the deployment of a Stark verifier in Bitcoin script becomes a reality. This would open Bitcoin to better options, including programmable vaults, risk management and hedging tools, credit, loans, derivatives, futures contracts, all of which could be done with anonymity if desired. And all of this is possible because Bitcoin will make other VMs and programming languages verifiable, with solutions based on the StarkNet client like Kakarot, Herodotus, StarkNet and its Layer 3, and Risk Zero. We could use languages like Rust, Solidity, and Cairo. Bitcoin would open up to almost all cryptographic developers in the world. Eli Bensison's ultimate goal is to finally scale Bitcoin, in addition to Ethereum, by installing StarkNet as a layer two. This would make the two most secure and decentralized blockchains as scalable as possible. StarkNet has everything it needs to achieve this goal. Indeed, since Bitcoin's creation in 2008, it has undergone several optimizations, including Taproot and Segwit, which have facilitated the integration of Layer 2 by allowing Bitcoin to handle much more data at a lower cost. Furthermore, progress is finally being made to integrate ZKPs into Bitcoin with the ZeroSync project. If OPCAT theoretically allows Bitcoin to verify zero-knowledge proofs, it is still necessary to develop such a verifier in practice on Bitcoin script. To this end, Zero Sync is an initiative co-founded by Eli Bensison and launched in 2022 by Lucas George, starting with a lightweight version that is currently integrated into Zero Sync called LightSync. LightSync validates batches of Bitcoin block headers and attests to their correct validation using a Stark proof. This was followed by the open source development of a Stark verifier by Starkware, a grant by OnlyDust for research and development in 2023. And in June 2023, Andrew Milson began developing the mini Stark Prover. Zero Sync is based on Stark proofs, which are relatively simple compared to other proof systems. Starks rely only on hash functions and polynomials. No new cryptographic assumptions are required. And most importantly, there is no need for a trusted setup, meaning no additional trust assumptions are added to those of Bitcoin. We will discuss this further in an upcoming video, but Starks make a lot of sense for scaling Bitcoin. Arguably, the only way, if you're a Bitcoin maximalist. Zero Sync is therefore working towards the eventual integration of a ZKP verifier into the main layer of Bitcoin, as well as implementing Bitcoin proofs. To do this, Zero Sync uses the Cairo language created by Starkware, 
They work closely with the developers of all the Stark tools underlying Zero Sync. The Bitcoin Sats funding fund has also aligned with the development of Zero Sync, ultimately making it the most anticipated project by both communities for scaling Bitcoin. We must not lose sight of the original mission of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. Cryptocurrencies can rebalance the digital and financial worlds. They can guarantee the integrity of money and the freedom of exchanges. By returning control of big technologies to sovereign individuals, they are a tool to empower humans and communities. And no vision of this kind is complete without scaling the blockchain that launched this great project. The Bitcoin white paper envisioned a network that would be suitable for both small and large payments, accessible to everyone, rich and poor alike. Today, 1.5 billion people in the world don't even have a bank account. Bitcoin payments wouldn't just be an alternative for these people, they would actually be their only solution for accessing financial infrastructure. Bitcoin currently has too little capacity, making transactions too expensive for almost all of these 1.5 billion people. Making StarkNet a tool from which Bitcoin can benefit would offer us the best of both worlds. Tremendous cryptographic innovation supported by Bitcoin security, enabling the scale needed to serve everyone all the time. This has been the mission of StarkNet and its founder from the very beginning. So let's closely follow the proposal to reintegrate OPCAT into Bitcoin and the ongoing technical advancements on StarkNet that Bitcoin could benefit from. I'm excited to see how all this will evolve. To make sure you don't miss anything on this topic, you can follow us on Twitter. And for more content like this, don't forget to like and subscribe. On that note, see you soon.